Hello and welcome to today's webinar, it's the Roadmap Strategy Update for SDL TMS and SDL Managed Translation. My name's Kate and I'll be your host. We're hosting this webinar to introduce the new, fe new capabilities, features and improvements in these translation management products. We'll also touch on some of the updates made in the past year that you may have missed. Um, your speakers today are David Pooley, who's the Senior Product Manager for SDL TMS, and Ian Parnell, the Product Manager for SDL Managed Translation. We're expecting today's webinar to last around 25 to 30 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. If you do have any questions throughout this webinar, then please pop them in the Q&A box in the Ask a Question tab. I'm now going to pass you over to David to begin the presentation. Thanks, Kate. Um, okay, so what we are going to cover today, uh, we're going to just run through a uh, revise what we've what we, our themes are for our translation management products. We're going to look at the recent releases and some of the features that have been provided there, run a couple of demos, um, then we'll go through and talk about the roadmaps for the products, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end, as Kate said. So moving swiftly on, uh, the translation management themes, I think maybe if you've seen presentation before, you'll notice that these are broadly the same as previously. Our themes are uh, connectivity to make sure that we um, can integrate with content repositories. Uh, we have lots of connectors already available and we'll see some of those in the coming slides. Our convergence strategy is where we are deploying new functionality in SDL Language Cloud and then using that functionality across all our language technology products. Uh, so that includes Studio and Group Share uh, and other products as well as the products that we're talking about today. Security and performance, uh, we've had a quite a big focus on security recently. Uh, we'll look at those features um, in some of the slides coming up. Performance is always important to us to make sure that we uh, have systems that are performant and allow you to leverage uh, your translation memories and get your content through as quickly as possible. We have a dedicated user experience team who help us with improving on the products that we already have, improving on some of the pages that we already have as well as uh, working with us whenever we come to create new features and functionality in our products. And customer satisfaction is always important to us to make sure that we are resolving defects, uh, implementing features in a timely fashion. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Ian, who's going to talk a little bit more about the connectivity um, theme that we have. Thanks, David. Uh, so I'm just going to start by um, showing you a, a slide that, again, we, we've probably uh, seen previously on, on webinars that David and I have um, presented on, albeit updated to reflect some of the new connectors and integrations that we have developed. Um, through 2019 to date, I mean, we have slightly reduced the, the, cadence, the cadence that we've started to release new language connectors. We, we had quite a a uh, spurt of new um, connectors and integrations that were developed over the last couple of years. Um, but for uh, various reasons, that started to slow down somewhat. And we've narrowed our focus more on a smaller number of um, new language integrations, but also optimizing some of the existing language connectors that we have uh, according and, and dictated to by customer demand and requirements. So just to call out a couple of examples, uh, of the, the connectors that we have been working on so far this year. We do now have integrations available with Sitecore and Viva. Uh, we'll look a little bit more at the Viva integration uh, shortly. In terms of the existing language connectors that we have continued to develop and evolve, um, we have recently made updates available to our Marketo connector, similarly for GitHub um, Zendesk, HubSpot, and NetServer. So as I mentioned, we, we've tried to kind of um, claw in um, the, the focus, the connectors that we've been focusing on and delivering on the requests that we've been receiving from our, our customer base. 
Uh, one other thing to mention, again, we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on in the webinar. We will shortly be releasing an in-context review feature uh, that supplements our integration with Adobe Experience Manager. So again, more to follow on that slightly later in the webinar today. And if we now uh, move on to the Viva integration that we've made available recently. So we have a, a short video in here just to, to demonstrate how uh, the Viva integration works. Okay, so Viva has uh, become quite a common uh, content management system in the life sciences space. We have uh, we've received a lot of requests from our customer base to build this type of integration. Um, the key elements really to, to kind of call out as we're looking through this video demonstration is that users are clearly able to, to manage the process uh, of localization in the Viva interface. So it's a system and a user interface that they're already familiar with. It isn't necessary for users to have to leave the content repository. They can do everything within their own system. They don't have to worry about learning a new, uh, a new system and a new user interface. In saying that, all of the, uh, the localization collateral that the customer has uh, accumulated is still exposed through this integration. So translation memories, workflows, all the types of linguistic resources, they can still be made available to these users, albeit the, the, the interaction is coming from within the Viva interface. So as, as you've been following the videos we've, we've walked through this, the user has selected the content that they want to send for localization. They're entering the, the, the field the information that's typical for for translation projects, regardless of whether they're created in a TNS interface or in a mantra interface. So for example, with project name and description. The project option is what's coming from this customer's uh, specific environment that's been configured from them. So this determines what, uh, what workflows are available, what language pairs can be supported, uh, what translation memories, terminology and costing is applied, and so on. And once the form has been completed, uh, the, the customer is able to send the project through. That will then be created in the customer's backend TMS system, and the appropriate workflow will be followed for the, the translation options, the project options that they've selected. And if we just kind of close the loop in, in here, we can see that the project that we've just created from Viva is now available from within the translation management system interface. Okay, thanks Ian. Uh, so we're just going to have a little, just a quick slide on security. As I said earlier on, uh, we have done quite a bit of work on security in both Mantra and TMS, a bit more in, in TMS uh, specifically. So what we've been working on, uh, as you're probably aware, and as we uh, stated earlier on, um, on one of the slides, both products uh, development process is ISO 27001 certified. Uh, we do regular penetration tests. We use the OWASP top 10 uh, list uh, to make sure that we are not vulnerable to penetration uh, attacks uh, on the system. We run those regularly. We make sure that we resolve any issues that are found. Uh, and the recent release of TMS, TMS 12.3, um, eradicated all the high and critical uh, penetration vulnerabilities that were there. SDL TMS, in addition, uh, we've been working towards a security standard that's used uh, in life sciences called HITRUST, uh, and our preliminary audit on our latest version of TMS uh, shows that we are now HITRUST compliant uh, with regards to the security of TMS. Um, so that's, uh, that's another area where we've been putting quite a bit of concentration, and that's all about uh, being able to secure accounts, make sure that we log every 
everything that happens with regards to users logging in, logging out, failed logins, make sure we log any security events, make those available to uh, uh, security information event management system uh, and everything like that. So um, lots of focus on security in the last few months and that's culminated with the release of TMS 12.3. Uh, so we're just going to cover now some of those recent releases for uh, SQL Managed Translation and SQL TMS, and I think we'll start with SQL Managed Translation. So over to you, Ian. Thanks, David. So um, I just wanted to highlight from this slide uh, a couple of the, the highlights uh, from the features that we released throughout uh, 2018. So we, in as part of the 18.8 release, uh, released a new user interface for SDL managed translation that we are referring to in terms of our graphene user interface. It's being adopted more and more across uh, the various language technology products uh, that SDL are developing. Uh, as part of that new user interface, we also uh, introduced a new in-platform broadcasting feature, which allows us now to, to more proactively notify our use space of new product releases, uh, features that we're introducing in the product. We also now have support for single sign-up, uh, including customers that may want to federate with their own identity management system. And again, going back to the convergence uh, theme that David touched on earlier, there, there are various elements in, in the roadmap. Uh, that can all form into to this, uh, to this theme. So language cloud terminology being one of the, the main examples of that which went into production right at the end of last year. Now, the, the nature of, uh, of this feature implies that there are various products uh, across the, the translation ecosystem that this touches. So there were features that we had to make available in TMS in order to support language cloud terminology and allow customers to configure any uh, cloud term bases that they were creating. We obviously needed to build out the support in SDL managed translation so users are able to go in and manage their terminology through, again, an interface that they're familiar with. Uh, in SDL Trados Studio, we also introduced support, again, towards the back end of last year for language cloud terminology. So for the, the linguists that choose to work offline, they are provided with a link into the relevant cloud term bases that need to be applied for a particular project. And then the final product, which was also um, required to integrate with the language cloud terminology, was our language cloud online editor. So again, all touch points, all types of users that needed to interact with the project, we had to make sure that language cloud terminology was supported. And since that initial release, we have continued to, to make new features available in support of, of those integrations. So just to give you even one example of that, from the online editor, users are now able to pull through any uh, metadata or attributes that have been configured and set within their term bases. And if we just take a look now as to how some of those features uh, from 2018 map, map into the overall themes uh, that we're working to, that again, um, David talked around earlier on in the, in the webinar. Um, Connectivity, uh, as I mentioned, we, we continue, continue to build out the list of language connectors and integrations that we're able to support. Uh, as part of that, there have been a number of extensions that we have needed to implement for our API. So as and when we integrate with a new system, there may be certain requirements uh, that are needed in the API to support the types of uh, features that we're looking to implement. For convergence, uh, and I kind of started to, to kind of talk in a little bit of detail around this on the previous slide, we've continued to build out additional uh, capabilities that can now be exposed through the existing uh, product technologies. So specifically, the online editor for Language Cloud and the terminology module of Language Cloud are now available 
to customers using uh, SDL managed translation, we have implemented uh, and released our new user interface, graphing user interface, and we have that support for single sign-off, again, which applies across the, the product stack. Customer satisfaction is, as always, is a very Im important consideration for us. Um, so a number of the, the features that we uh, released in 2018 were initiate, initially raised by our uh, ideas section on the SDL community. We have further enhancements planned for the remainder of 2019. Again, that were all initially raised with us through the, the community forum. So that's a, it's a very important uh, means for us to collect ideas and suggestions from customers and then clearly that the most popular of those ideas will start to feature in our roadmaps. All right, Ian. Uh, so just going back then over the sort of last year or so for SDL CMS, um, I've gone back a year with this because 12.0 was really when we started with our sort of convergence. And you can see there with the online editor and the single sign-on that we released uh, back in this time last year, uh, back in April 2018. Um, and the most recent, and as you can see as we go through uh, things like GDPR, the security enhancements, and then the high trust uh, implementations, we've had a lot of focus on security, as I said before. Uh, with SDR TMS 12.2, which was released last November, we did quite a bit of work on the infrastructure to um, improve the performance. Uh, so not only did we re-engineer some of the translation memory uh, technology that we have, uh, we also made sure that SDL could be deployed on the latest versions of the operating systems and uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Um, so that allows us to uh, streamline our own hosting as well as uh, hopefully the hosting that you if, if you're self-hosting the event in the uh, Make sure you're using the latest versions of the operating systems there. Uh, customer satisfaction is obviously a theme that we spread across and we, as I said, we, we strive to include features and functionality as well as resolving any critical defects uh, and other defects as we go through the releases. Um, the one thing, the improved account linking in TMS 12.3 again is a, is a, a convergence theme that makes it much easier to link your organization to SDR Language Cloud, whereas before it was quite complex with doing various copying and pasting of tenants and API keys and lots of other information between the two products. Now you can simply uh, log into TMS, go to your organization, select, select the appropriate Language Cloud account from a, from a drop-down, uh, and all the uh, hard work is done in the background by SDL TMS integrating with SDL Language Cloud. So again, similar slide to Ian's for managed translation. We have what, what have we done? Uh, well, in terms of the connectivity, we provided the ability to use custom interfaces. That was presented earlier on in um, a previous webinar. So if you want more information about that, go and have a look back on the community, and you should find. Uh, some videos around that. On the convergence, as I said, single sign-on and then all the technologies that we're reusing through SDL Language Cloud. So that's the online editor, the cloud terminology again that uh, Ian was talking about, the filtering capabilities that we now have so that we can use cloud-based filters rather than using the file types that are embedded within SDL TMS. Obviously, security and performance, quite a lot of Focus GDPR was a big topic last year, and we did uh, quite some work with that to make sure that the personally identifiable information was all well governed. Uh, high trust, as I've talked about, audit trails. We're trying to keep track of all changes made to configuration of SDL TMS, so that if there's an issue, we can go back and can find out when that was introduced, how it was introduced, um, and who introduced it. Uh, on the user experience, that account linking obviously is, a, is much easier now. Charter Studio plugins uh, constantly updated to make sure that we're supporting the latest versions of Charter Studio to the latest versions of SDL TMS. So there's plugins there that allow you to look at your TMS inbox 
uh, from within Studio, so you can use Studio and not have to log into FDL TMS to do your translation work. Uh, there's also Studio plugins for accessing the SDL TMS translation memories uh, from within Studio. Um, we are currently working on vendor enhancements and we continue to work on vendor enhancements, so we're making SDL TMS a much more compelling proposition for multi-vendor deployments. We already support multi-vendor, obviously, but we we go back. We're going to go back and revisit some of that and uh, ramp up on that functionality as well. Uh, so I'm now going to hand over to Ian, who's going to walk you through uh, a, a demo of the cloud inbox for project managers. Thanks, David. So I'm mean, just to you know, give a bit of um, an introduction to this feature before we we go through. Uh, the actual demo. So we we do have a, an increasing number uh, of customers that work with managed translation, but uh, for whatever reason prefer to work with some of their own language service providers uh, or even um, internal resources throughout the the translation workflow. So what we are going to do with this particular feature, what we call in this cloud inbox for project managers, is provide those users with an alternative interface to what we can support through uh, SDL PMS, albeit with a very kind of simplified and reduced feature set that we can support. Again, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that um, users prefer to work in systems and technology that they are familiar with. So a lot of the language service providers that receive work from customers in managed translation they may well have their own technology systems. So this cloud inbox can be thought of as a means of almost a, a portal for, for receiving uh, projects from their customers, being able to download the relevant resources and financial for those projects, and then deliver once the, the translations have been uh, performed by their, their translation community and resources. The user interface um, for this cloud inbox, as you'll see shortly, is still in keeping with all the other features that we can support in Mantra. So it's designed to be as simple as we can possibly make it for users. And as I said, the, the feature set has deliberately been kept uh, to the minimum we feel is necessary um, to, to kind of keep that onboarding uh, and training requirement to absolute minimum. So if we take a look through uh, the video that we have in support of this. I'll just kind of call out some of the main um, elements as we go through the video. Uh, we're clearly logging in now in the in the guise of a LSP project manager, all through the, the managed translation interface, and they now have access to this orders tab. So within here, they're able to see a list of projects, quote requests we call them initially, that have been received by their customers. They're able to see linguistic uh, information as calculated by the corresponding DMS system. They can see a list of the, the files and resource uh, reference files associated with the project. And they also have a means of downloading and delivering a package. As part of the quote request, the project manager can go in and review and amend the cost of the project. This is in accordance with the cost formula that has been configured by the customer. So in this case, the cost formula has a review fee uh, included, which the vendor project manager is able to go in and include if necessary. And once they're happy with the quote, they can then submit that through to the end customer for approval. That request is then transformed into an order once the customer has authorized the project. And the project, project manager would then, through managed translation, go in and download a studio package containing all of the, the relevant collateral for this particular project. They would distribute those packages and resources out to their translation community. And once the translation materials have been delivered back to them, the project manager would then upload that back in through the Mantra interface, through this cloud inbox, and submit the order back through to the end customer so they can go in and download the translated materials for the project.
If we move on to, to talk around the roadmaps and timelines, uh, again, we'll, we'll kick off with managed translation and then move back to David to talk around a still TMS. So I talked earlier on uh, in the slide around the, the connector updates that we've been working on specifically around Marketo, HubSpot, and the new Sitecore connector that we have implemented. They were all uh, part of our 19.3 release, which was recently deployed into production. Uh, as part of that, we also introduced a, um, a preview capability from within our language cloud online editor and from the customers that we started to make this available to. Um, the, the lack, uh, the, the previous absence of a preview was one of the main um, main areas that the customers wanted us to address. So that was included in the, the previous update. As part of that release, we have also uh, enabled encryption at rest, again, in keeping with the, the security focus. Let's see. Coming up throughout the remainder of this year, uh, we have the, the cloud inbox uh, that we've just seen the demo for. Um, in addition, we have the in context review capability that will be available for our AEM integration. Uh, we have a slide that talks around that and put a bit more detail a little later in the presentation. Uh, the other area that we continue to focus on is around this, this concept of mid-project updates. So we started to introduce this type of functionality towards the back end of last year in SDL Managed Translation. So we started to allow uh, client users from within Managed Translation to edit certain fields of existing projects, so specifically the, the project name, description, and the due date. In an upcoming release of Managed Translation, we're going to take that uh, a couple of steps further. So in addition, we'll be allowing users to upload reference material reference files to an existing project. Again, we, we're conscious of the fact that when, when a customer initially creates a project, they may not have all of the resources to hand that they want to make available to their translation community, to their project managers. So being able to upload resource files once the project is created, you know, it simplifies the process and, and alleviates the need for projects to have to be created or those resources to be uh, sent offline to their project managers. In addition, we're also going to be making, uh, making it possible for custom fields within a project to be updated for existing projects. So um, metadata attributes, they will also be open to editing for projects that have previously been created. And if I hand back to David now, just to talk through some of the roadmap items that he has for SDL CMS. Okay, for the remainder of the year uh, on SDL CMS, we are looking at a couple of more releases. Uh, so, we have, first of all, a 12.4 release where we are going to be delivering more of those enhanced vendor features. Um, so, this is a, a, again a reworking of, of our multi vendor support in TMS to make it more flexible and more configurable. Uh, talked about the audit trails, extending those yet again to make sure that we can track all changes that have been made uh, to the configuration in TMS. We'll be upgrading the filters so that we, we grab hold of the latest and greatest filters uh, available uh, to the same set that are used in SDO Trello Studio and obviously, as I said before, customer satisfaction every release, we keep that going, uh, we make sure uh, that we keep up to date with that. Uh, we were then looking at doing a 12.5 uh, in TMS around the end of the year. We are still planning that feature set, so we don't have anything confirmed as yet, so now is a great time to get onto the uh, community site and get some ideas in if you want to try and um, influence what we're going to do there with the TMS 12.5. And as I say, customer satisfaction um, is always going on. I'm just going to hand back to Ian now, who's going to talk us through uh, a little slide on in-context review. Thanks, David. So I've mentioned this uh, a couple of um, 
points earlier on in, in the webinar, our um, support for in-context review. Now, this will initially be made available as part of our uh, Adobe Experience Manager integration. And it will be made available in the next few weeks. Now, this is uh, primarily based around our language cloud online editor. Again, that we now uh, have made available from both the STL TMS and STL Managed Translation systems. Now, the, the key uh, capabilities within this uh, in-context review is clearly allowing reviewers to be able to view the content as it would appear in the published version of a file or a, a component. In addition, the reviewers are able to interact directly with the content and make changes in line within this in-context review feature. Where the review does need to make changes, any updates are then reflected in the review interface that they're seeing, and any changes that might be uh, implied on the layout of, of the content because of the, the, the length of the, the translation uh, that they're working on, those layout changes would be preserved in, the, in what they're seeing within this in-context review feature. This capability is, or this is a framework, or you can think of this as a framework that we are building around our language cloud online editor. So, although initially we are focusing around our integration with Adobe Experience Manager, this will in the future be extended to support some of the other integrations that we have available, but also for additional file formats uh, that we choose to, to support. So the same the same look and feel, the same feature set will be made available and extended for all the types of content in the future. Uh, you can think of Adobe Experience Manager as kind of the, the first um, for if you like, uh, that we wanted to focus on in building this framework for in-context review. Thanks, Ian. Uh, we're just going to finish off now with a little few slides on Language Cloud. Um, so, SDL Language Cloud today is already providing key functionality that is being used by our existing products, so SDL Managed Translation, TMS, World Server, Studio, and Group Share are all using capabilities today, uh, such as translation memory, filtering terminology, machine translation, and the online editor. But SDL Language Cloud going forward will be much more than just a, a hosting place where we provide these capabilities. It will actually have its own uh, user interface. It will have its own user experience. It will have its own features and functionality, which, again, are built on these core language technologies that we have. Uh, but in addition, we'll be looking to implement uh, functionality that is in line with the functionality that we have today in both uh, SDL Managed Translation uh, and in SDL TMS, uh, and for that matter also in, in SDL World Server. So over and above uh, the shared services as, as was displayed there, we're going to have um, the capability to do translation requests, so this is creating projects, we'll have, we'll have dashboards in there, you go to do your project management. Uh, translation review will also take place in there. There will be all portals and dashboards for everyone in the localization supply chain. So everyone from the content owner, the LSP project managers, the translators, reviewers, uh, and everyone else will have their own experience within Language Cloud. And um, uh, and you will have language cloud will be the place where everyone comes in that localization supply chain. It will be as well uh, be powered by our linguistic AI. So we'll be able to for content that comes in, we'll be able to run some uh, translation analysis to work out what type of content that is, what language that content is in. We'll be able to then intelligently route that. So if it's marketed material in English, we'll know that this is. You know, this is our preferred translator when we're going into German and uh, things like that. 
Um, we also have obviously our machine translation uh, coming in there as well through the linguistic AI and our machine translation continues to evolve uh, from our original uh, rules based to, to uh, example based machine translation and now obviously everyone uh, including SDL we're going on to neural machine translation as well. And when you say you see power by high that is our linguistic AI. Uh, it's called HI, H-A-I. So as we move forward, it will, Language Cloud will hopefully solve the localization supply chain needs. So as I said, there will be somewhere for content owners to come. They can track their projects, see what's happening, submit new projects, download translations. Uh, localization managers will be able to have a dashboard where they can see, uh, you know, a hot uh, uh, a list of issues that need resolving straight away. I think if you can vaguely see that on the right hand side in red. We have a heat map of clients uh, and jobs in progress and to see what needs to be done there. Uh, we'll be able to have a look at issues and query management and everything else there. And then obviously for the translators and the reviewers we already have the SDL online editor and they'll be able to continue to use that um, and that will be all integrated with the translation memory and the terminology and everything else. And all that will be enabled through that language cloud platform. Um, so that's, I think, everything that we wanted to cover today. Uh, just a quick note that, as I mentioned earlier, we do have an ideas page on the SDL community. If you're not already a member of the community, please come along, sign up, get your SDL ID, um, join the SDL TMS and SDL Managed Translation groups. This presentation will be published to that community site uh, probably from tomorrow or the day after, I'm not sure. Um, so please come along, join the community and help contribute and make these products uh, better. And with that, I'm going to hand back to Kate, who's just going to have a little uh, run the Q&A session for us. Great. Thank you very much. Um, as you just said, we're going to address any questions that come in from the audience. I do have a few questions that have already come in, but if you do have any questions, please pop them into the, the Q&A box. Um, first one is, are you logging information around impersonation events? Right, so the impersonation events uh, are not, sorry, yes we are. <laughs> When you're impersonating someone at the moment in TMS, we are logging the fact that that person is doing the certain events around the uh, audit trail and everything else. The one thing we're not logging at the moment uh, is the fact that you are that you are impersonating another user, but that's coming in 12.4. Uh, okay, great. The next question we've got is, how do I provide my LSP with access to the new cloud inbox? Okay, I can take that one, Kate. Um, so in the first instance, um, I would advise anyone to, to, to get in touch with, with the, the normal contact person that they would speak with at SDL. Uh, if, if you're not sure who that is, then raise a, a support ticket and we'll make sure that, that gets routed through uh, to, to myself or somebody that can support you with that. I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, the initial uh, version of this cloud inbox has deliberately been kept very lightweight and, and very uh, simple. Um, so we will need to work with um, the, the LSPs that you think this will be suited, suitable for um, to make sure that it provides them with all the, the functionality, the, the features that they would need. And once we're happy that the solution is a good fit, then we can work on um, enabling this for for those LSPs and, and vendors. Uh, I mean, just to, to add to, to that, given that it's um, kind of topical and, and related to, to this, I would also say the same, make the same point. If we have any customers that are interested in any of the other language cloud capabilities that we've talked about in this webinar, um, so specifically the language cloud online editor, the new language cloud terminology module. We've just, um, we're in the process of onboarding our first uh, customers into production with language cloud terminology. Um, 
if, if anybody on the webinar is interested in learning more about that terminology module, uh, who would like to, to kind of get access to uh, um, an environment they can use to evaluate that, then again, please get in touch with your regular contact person at, at SDL, uh, and those requests will come through to me, and I can help you with those. Great, thank you. The next question is, are translators working for my LSP forced to work in SDL Trados Studio? Um, no, uh, is, is the simple answer. Uh, I mean, just to, to kind of re recap, I, I talked on this in a little uh, detail earlier on as we were going through um, the, the demo video, but within a, a studio package, there are various uh, resources that are associated with, with the project that is being sent for, for translation. So, uh, for example, any project settings that need to be applied are available in the studio package. Um, projects, TM project translation memories, links to terminology databases, uh, all of the linguistic analysis that's come from TMS. They are all contained within the studio package that a user can download uh, from the, the cloud inbox. Now, some of those are clearly only relevant if users are working in Trados Studio. So we would always recommend, um, if possible, for translators to work in Studio. But if, for whatever reason, um, translators don't want or aren't able to work in Studio, then they can take, still take some of the information within the Studio package and use um, conversion plugins or plugins that have been developed for the systems in order to work on those translation projects. So, no, we don't force users to, but we would recommend wherever possible translators to work in Travel Studio. Great, thank you. Uh, another question has come in. What is the process and timeline to, to migrate existing TMS and Mantra customers to Language Cloud? Uh, okay, um, so obviously TMS uh, is very complex and highly customizable, in some cases highly customized system. And if the language cloud in its first incarnation is not going to offer that same level of complexity. Uh, so for migrating, if anyone wants to migrate to SDL Language Cloud, we will evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. We will look at the complexity involved in their current implementation. And once the once we can have feature parity or sufficient parity in Language Cloud, then we'll look to migrate those users. So there's no timeline setting stone for, for migrating everyone across. By that same token, obviously, it, it may be some time uh, before some of our existing customers can migrate to SDL Language Cloud if they so wish. And so we will continue to evolve and support and maintain the existing products uh, during that time. So there's no suggestion that uh, SDL TMS is, uh, is going to wither on the vine, as it were. Uh, we will continue to work on that as we move forward with SDL Language Cloud in parallel. Great. We've got just two more questions come in. So the next one is, is, is AEM in context review available for TMS users? Uh, yes, uh, we can make that available for TMS users. Uh, there are a, a couple of um, dependencies or, or requirements. Clearly, uh, the customer will need to be working with our uh, integration that's available for Adobe Experience Manager. That's the first thing. And then also, the customer would need uh, to have their uh, translation or review users working in the language cloud online editor. So this the the in context review isn't something that we will support through the TMS um, equivalent of the online editor, the, the translation interface. But so long as the uh, the, the customer is, is using um, those two features, capabilities, then the in context review module can be made available to them. Uh, I mean again, just as as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm not sure who was raising the, the question, but if they want to kind of get in touch with us through their contact person, then we can provide you with more information on that as and when uh, we release this feature in the coming weeks. Okay, and then the final question we've got is, 
are the results of penetration tests for SDLTMS available to customers? Absolutely, yes they are. Uh, just again, get in touch with us uh, and we can make those penetration test results available to you, um, no problem. Okay, fantastic. So that's um, the end of the Q&A. We haven't got any other questions that have come in. So I just um, so just before we close the webinar, we wanted to share the following outline that, as I'm sure you're aware, as with all product roadmap and strategy sessions, today's presentation is intended to outline our general product direction and is for information purposes only and is not committed commitment to deliver any features or functionality. So thanks everyone for attending the webinar today. We hope you found it useful and we'll share the recording with you shortly. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.